Welcome, Dan Runner. If you grew up in the UK in the 1980s, then you'll most certainly be aware of Sir Clive Sinclair's wonder machine, the ZX Spectrum. It revolutionised home computing in my homeland, becoming the first colour computer that could be bought for less than £100 and went on to sell over 5 million units. A huge amount of current industry figures have stated that they owe their career to the ZX Spectrum and its influence on the video game industry really can't be understated. The computer also achieved moderate success in Europe too, and while several slightly altered models were released in North America by Timex, the system never really took off there. Because of this, the cult-like passion for the Speccy from this side of the world continues to baffle our American friends to this very day. Although the computer was very much the brainchild of Sir Clive and his company, a large amount of the system's success actually came after he sold the company to his rival Alan Sugar and his company Amstrad in 1986. Under Lord Sugar's stewardship, the ZX Spectrum continued to be sold right into the 90s, and several new models were introduced in this time, including the 128K Plus 2, Plus 3, and Plus 2A. Now, the title of this video is The Story of the Last Sinclair. So many people believe that it ended right there, when Sinclair was sold to Amstrad. This would make the Spectrum 128K Plus the last real Sinclair computer, given it was the last model retailed under Sir Clive's control. Indeed, this would be a fitting end too as the 128K+, Plus, which is affectionately known as the toast rack due to its large heat sink, is widely regarded as the best model of the computer by Speccy fans, not just because of its classic Sinclair stylings, but also because of the extra memory, new sound chip, better keyboard and improved compatibility over Amstrad's own 128K Spectrums. Sinclair's new ZX Spectrum Action Pack has a powerful 128K home computer, a joystick, six very different games, and a deadly accurate light gun. That'll keep those droids on the run. The new Sinclair Action Pack puts the zap back into computers. But if we were ending it there, then this would be a pretty short and rather pointless video, because everyone is aware of the toast rack. So turn your head away from the ZX Spectrum, please, and concentrate on the Sinclair brand itself, because the last computer to carry the famous moniker wasn't even a Spectrum, or even remotely related to it. Now I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of super smug Sinclair fans sitting there watching this right now shouting Sinclair PC200 at the screen. And indeed, until very recently, I would have been doing the exact same thing. But you'd actually be wrong. There was in fact another computer after this, one that is even more obscure and unknown. But before I go into detail on the real holder of the last Sinclair crown, I should really touch on the Sinclair PC200 a little more, as this is an interesting story in itself, and it directly influences the rest of the story I'm about to tell. Released in 1988, the PC200 was announced as a true successor to the ZX Spectrum that would go head to head with the 16-bit Atari ST and Commodore Amiga computers. But this was a bit misleading, as there was no way this could ever be considered a games machine. It was more like a replacement for the much maligned Sinclair QL that was better served for business applications. The key thing here is the name, PC200. Using a 16-bit Intel 8086 CPU and running MS-DOS, this was very much an IBM-compatible PC clone at its heart. Although the way the machine was designed, it actually wasn't a true PC compatible at all and it was missing many features that had become standard around this time. This and the combination of the outdated CJ graphics card, when EJ was being widely used by other manufacturers, 
meant the hardware was distinctly unimpressive and unappealing for anyone looking at buying a PC around this time. Comparisons to the aforementioned Atari ST are very hard not to make, however, as the case design is remarkably similar for starters, only in black instead of white. The all-in-one case was also a strange choice for a PC, and meant that upgrading the machine was difficult and cumbersome, adding expansion cards actually meant leaving the top wide open, totally negating the slick design. The design wasn't the only familiar thing here either. The PC200 could also be connected up to a standard TV set via an RF port, as well as a monitor, and featured both mouse and joystick ports as standard. It also used the same PC standard 720k, double-sided disk drive, and featured 512k of RAM, the same as the standard model of the Atari ST. This was strange in itself, where most PCs of the time used 640k as a minimum. It also launched at the exact same price too, £299.99. Most remarkably though, the computer was actually shipped with a version of Digital Research's GEM desktop, which had now become synonymous with the Atari ST, as well as MS-DOS and various business-styled applications. This seems strange when Amstrad were putting it up against the ST and promoting it as a ZX Spectrum replacement. Why would you not bundle any games with it, especially given the popularity of the Atari ST power pack around that time? What made the PC200 even more pointless was it was actually nothing more than a rebranded version of an existing Amstrad machine in the form of the PC20, which looked even more Atari ST and Amiga-like due to the colour. I think we can all be in agreement that the PC200 was nothing more than a cynical cash-in by Amstrad, who were clearly hoping they could stop some loyal Sinclair fans from jumping ship to Atari and Commodore. Within six months, the PC200 was being heavily discounted by retailers, and by the end of the year, Amstrad had abandoned it completely and gone back to promoting new budget price Spectrum packages, as well as their own range of Amstrad-branded computers. Peter's secretary found her new Amstrad word processor easy peasy to use because the full-size screen let her see the construction of each page, while Dick's PA liked it because each client could have a separate disk. Kate, who was also the accounts clerk, suddenly remembered the free spreadsheet software offer and that Dick was big and hunky and could ditch the old typewriter. With a range of printers, Amstrad word processors start at £399.99, including VAT, or oh, a free spreadsheet software offer. But Alan Sugar wasn't quite done with sullying the Sinclair brand yet, and in 1990 Amstrad introduced the final computer to carry the Sinclair branding, APC386SX. As you can probably guess by the name already, this was a far more capable computer being based on an Intel 386 CPU and was widely compatible with all existing PC compatible applications. Thanks to its more traditional pizza box style design, it was also much simpler to upgrade to. Rather curiously though, the APC 386SX didn't just carry the Sinclair branding, it also used the Amstrad name too as you can see. I really can't understand the logic of including both names at this point especially when you consider that Amstrad already had a huge slice of the UK PC market under their own name. If you're wondering why you never heard about this machine at all, it could possibly be because it was launched at the same time as Amstrad's new CPC Plus range that included their attempt to gain a slice of the lucrative console market in the form of the GX4000. Amstrad had thrown their entire marketing budget behind the launch of these new machines and all other computer hardware was of secondary importance around this time. The new CPC Plus range was a huge failure for Amstrad and they soon consolidated their computer business into purely producing a small range of PC compatibles and laptops, which proved to be a far more successful venture. But this isn't quite the end of the story. There was one final and incredibly bizarre appearance of the Sinclair brand under Amstrad in 2002, as the company released a revised model of their popular emailer telephone. The emailer plus, as well as several later models, contained the ability to play a range of ZX Spectrum games on their tiny screen, as well as the standard email, messaging and telephone abilities. These models even featured a small rubber keyboard, making the experience even more authentic. Although the emailer was never branded with the Sinclair name, the appearance of the Sinclair ROM and ZX Spectrum compatibility makes it worthy of inclusion here. Hiya Grandad, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, a good son. Hi darling. Oh, hi babe. Hey, I was out shopping the other day and I bought some boots, some new hiking boots. Hey, I've got them down here, I'll just grab them, I'll show you one of them. I think they're really nice, they seemed really comfortable when I had them on. And they're going to be perfect for those hills that we've got to climb. Let's see the other one. It's just the same as that one, Grandad. Oh, go on, show us. Okay, I've got it here somewhere. I'll tell you what, the weather seems like it's going to be nice for the weekend. Here you go, Grandad, it's just the same. I'll tell you what, son. You've got a lovely pair there. 
Look who's talking, the Amstrad e-mailer E3 video phone, available now for around £99. The brand wouldn't make another appearance on a home computing device until the arrival of the officially licensed Sinclair ZX Vega plug and play console that was released by Retro Computers Limited in 2015. It's now set to make another appearance on a home computer in the form of the much anticipated ZX Spectrum Next. And that concludes the story of the last Sinclair. I hope you enjoyed my look back at this piece of history and please check out my other ZX Spectrum based documentaries as well as a host of other historical videos. Before I go, I must thank all my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. So special thanks to Thunder Fundington, John DiLiberto, Keith, Carl Olson, Larry Anderson, Mark Slorence, Mr Caboto, Psycho Lavos, Cold Art Fusion and Scott McGuire. If you want to do the same, then go check out my Patreon right now and get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.